Big news for many parents of young children. Health Canada has approved the Moderna vaccine for children aged six months to five years, opening up eligibility for roughly two million children in Canada. First COVID-19 vaccine authorized for in Canada for this age group. It's a smaller dose of 25 micrograms, which is half the dose authorized for children 6 to 11 years of age, and one quarter of the dose authorized for people over the age of 12. For more on this, we reached Canada's Deputy Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Howard New, in Ottawa. Dr. New, I want to begin with the discrepancy in vaccine interval recommendations between Health Canada and the Immunization Advisory Committee. Health Canada is recommending two doses taken four weeks apart. The committee suggests two doses eight weeks apart. Is this an either or? No, it's not an either or, but I, I think uh, we've gone th uh, down this road before and I, I would uh, say that uh, certainly the recommendation or, or what's coming forward from Health Canada in terms of its authorization is based on the clinical trial data given by the manufacturers. So, you know, based on that data, uh, the manufacturer, obviously, with the sort of maybe the compressed uh, time frame for the clinical trials, has data available with that interval of be it you know four weeks or so, and that's what's been given to Health Canada. But uh, what we've seen in Canada with our experience with the COVID-19 vaccines is that uh, from a immunological scientific point of view, there's benefit to be gained by having a longer interval between the two doses of a primary series. And so that's been borne out by the, 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 the accumulating evidence in terms of uh, both individual and population level immunity. And we're seeing that in terms of uh, uh, NASI that coming forward based on its review of the science that uh, an interval of at least eight weeks is, is, uh, is uh, actually best in terms of having a I'd say a longer lasting, more robust uh, sort of immunity and protection from the COVID-19 vaccines. And so now with this latest uh, Moderna vaccine for uh, uh, young kids, you know, from six months to uh, up to five years, uh, that, that principle is holding through in terms of uh, that recommendation for that eight week interval. And I think you're, you're recommending um, a window of 14 days between a COVID vaccine and another potential vaccine for anything else that a child that age would get. Why, why is that? Yeah, that's just standard, I think, a good uh, medical practice because certainly uh, with any uh, new vaccine, uh, we want to make sure that we're monitoring in terms of what we call post-marketing surveillance to see uh, if there are any adverse events uh, associated uh, post-vaccination. And if you give two vaccines at the same time and uh, an event occurs, it certainly might be difficult to tease out uh, which vaccine might have been responsible. So in terms of uh, really focusing on uh, what uh, might be happening after receiving the COVID-19 vaccine, that's why uh, that to recommend nations out there. But having said that, that we recognize that in certain circumstances, uh, there will be children that, uh, uh, based on, on, on uh, you know, an individual case-by-case -case basis, may require other vaccines to be administered at the same time uh, as a COVID-19 vaccine. And certainly, uh, that's a decision that the healthcare provider, obviously, uh, discussing with the parent uh, would be making. And, and so here we go, uh, you know, for this age group. How soon will the provinces and territories be able to roll this out, do you think? Oh, my understanding is that the, the vaccines are already sort of, uh, you know, in country and, and ready to roll out to the provinces and territories. And they should, in short order, be able to uh, unfold their vaccination programs uh, for this age group. In your uh, press conference today, you acknowledged uh, some provinces are in what's being termed the seventh wave. H how effective is this vaccine against the current BA4 and BA5 variants? Well, we're, we're learning as we go in terms of the BA4 and 5 variants. And what we're seeing is that uh, generally, uh, certainly when we're talking about the adults, uh, uh, having three doses, and that's why we keep stressing it's important to have your three doses, provides a very good protection against severe consequences. Uh, we do recognize that there's maybe some limitations in terms of uh, uh, preventing transmission and infection, but certainly against uh, serious consequences, uh, it's, it's uh, proven that three doses of the vaccine is good. And so this vaccine uh, for, for the young kids is certainly uh, similar to what uh, what vaccines are out there for adults, obviously a different formulation. And so the same thinking is that yes, uh, uh, certainly in terms of preventing serious outcomes uh, uh, for, 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 for these young children, that's certainly the, uh, the additional benefit. Uh, obviously, I think peace of mind for the parents and, and lots of other things go into the mix. But I think at the end of the day, it's about what's in the best interest of the child. And, and certainly we've seen, uh, although there's a, you know, it's a limited data that uh, 
although rare, there are instances of you know perfectly healthy young children that have uh, uh, gotten COVID uh, uh, up to now and have uh, ended up in the hospital and so on. So it's not something to be taken lightly. And certainly, uh, it's another option for parents uh, to consider in terms of protecting uh, their children. There's so much to, to keep track of, though, isn't there? And there's a lot of numbers uh, involved, right? Is, but, but if a child in the six-month to five-year age range gets COVID or has COVID, um, it's being recommended that you wait eight weeks after a positive infection to get the vaccine. Why is eight the magic number? Well, it's, it's based on, our again, our accumulating evidence in terms of, you know, how a uh, our immunity evolves of a post infection and what we've seen is that uh, by getting a, an infection from the virus itself there is a bit of a limited uh, you know uh, immunity that that's there for some period of time but it's not long lasting and forever and therefore uh, by by recognizing that that there is that short lived immunity uh, we still also recognize certainly on the science that we've seen to date that the more i think durable robust protection is afforded by the vaccines and so by waiting that that uh, you know that additional period uh, for uh, uh, for the let's say the natural uh, or the immunity acquired by uh, infection to the to wane it, that's uh, seen as the ideal time to also then uh, uh, continue with the vaccine program. So uh, they say that you know for for any dose, be it the, either the first dose or or, or you know uh, waiting for the second dose, that if you do get an infection, they should wait uh, that period of time before getting that dose. So the goal here obviously is to keep COVID at bay, right? But it, I mean, is part of the thinking here? also aimed at keeping schools open in the fall, given the age group we've got? Oh, definitely. Uh, we certainly, before COVID, uh, I think parents can all appreciate that, uh, you know, when once you get into the fall and the winter seasons, uh, especially young kids, they get all sorts of respiratory infections, you know, and uh, uh, in some ways that was uh, maybe a, uh, a sort of, a, I wouldn't say silver lining, but uh, certainly with the, the various uh, measures, uh, you know, lockdowns and so on, uh, the, we didn't have those increases in winter respiratory infections, both for the young kids and also for the adults. And now that uh, obviously uh, uh, things are opening up again, uh, generally across society, we fully anticipate that uh, with this fall and winter season that uh, we will get uh, the full range of, you know, respiratory infections, both for kids and adults. And uh, you're right, uh, we recognize how important it is for kids to uh, go to school, you know, uh, obviously for, for learning in their education, but also for so many other things, their social development, their mental health, uh, for the parents as well. And so uh, if this is a one uh, way we can keep uh, one of those, quote, infections at bay, uh, recognizing that there's probably still at risk for all the other respiratory infections, then I think uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've helped support, uh, the, obviously, the parents and uh, help protect the kids. I just want to ask, you know, we talk about all, all these, you know, variants ripping through uh, various provinces right now. I mean, broadly speaking, h how bad is the is the current wave, and and you know how much of a difference will getting a fourth shot or a second booster uh, make at this point? You think? I, I think you know that the, the message I would like to to uh, to underline is that it's so important, especially for anyone who's an adult, eighteen and over, to to make sure you have your three doses, because certainly the evidence uh, so far has shown that the, it's great protection against uh, against serious consequences. Uh, right now, you're seeing in, in many provinces, especially the big ones, I think Ontario and Quebec, uh, are acknowledging they are in the seventh wave and the hospitalization rates are increasing in, in many parts of the country. And so uh, uh, we see that and, and we recognize that, you know, people can't take it uh, for granted or, or thinking that, you know, COVID's over. So uh, please get your, your third dose. And uh, certainly I think uh, people uh, need to, to think about, you know, all the other layers of protection we've been uh, speaking about. You know, uh, if you're in indoor uh, spaces, uh, you know, uh, uh, with poor ventilation, or you're with other people who aren't a part of your household, that it's uh, probably a good idea to continue wearing a, a face mask. So uh, I would say yes. Uh, the seventh wave uh, shows us that we're, we're, we continuously need to learn about this virus because in the past, uh, in the summer, there's been a bit of a reprieve. The, the activity's gone down and it's been mostly in sort of the fall and the winter. But look, here we are in the summer and there's a seventh wave, you know, as the virus continues to evolve and mutate. So we definitely have to continue taking it seriously. I, I can attest to some of what you talk about. I, I had, I got COVID after having had three, but it was mild. Um, Good for you. Yeah. I've, huh. I've since had another, so I'm I'm now four with antibodies. So I think I can, I can keep my fingers crossed. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor New. Appreciate your time. Okay, you're very welcome. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel, or click the link for another video.